Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris, and today we're gonna be taking a look at the Ubiquity Dream Machine. This is model number UDM-US, and this is kind of like a all-in-one, like, a, like you know, you think like a multifunction printer. This is like a multifunction network, right? So this is your access point, cloud key, uh, four-port switch, and Unify controller, as well as your USG or firewall, kind of all rolled into one device for a $299 price point, which is actually pretty nice. So I'm gonna compare this to buying all of these sort of components separately later in this video. Uh, but for now, let's get this thing unboxed and I'll bring the camera close so you guys can take a look uh, while I take it out of the box. All right, so UDM, this is the non-pro version. They're also coming out with a UDM Pro. I don't really know the specs on that yet. Let's go ahead and get this thing opened up. There we go. All right, look at, they actually, like, the box has, like, a concave section in the top. <laughs> That's pretty neat. Good for shipping, I guess. So here's the device itself. Uh, it's pretty hefty. I would say this is about four pounds. And then we have some quick start guide. You can do the QR code to download the quick start guide. And then we have a power cable and that's it. That's it. Yeah, that's it. So power cable, UDM. Uh, the UDM itself has a power button on the bottom. We've got a uh, spot for the power plug here we've got a wan port we've got four lan ports now the switch on this thing uh, these are all gigabit but there's no power over ethernet uh, supplied by any of these ports this is regular straight up gigabit ethernet ports it's like this nice sort of soft plasticky uh material that they've been doing on a lot of their equipment lately which i actually think is pretty nice i'd love to paint one of these like r2d2 how cool would that be if you guys know how to paint one of these if you can paint it like R2-D2, contact me and I might I might commission you to do that. That would be super cool. All right, so let's talk about specs. So this thing has a 4x4 802.11 AC Wave 2 multi-user MIMO access point. Now that's in the 5 gigahertz. It's 802.11N for the 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, it has the 4.4 port gigabit switch with your one WAN port. Uh, there is a Unify controller on board, uh, although I don't know, it says Unify controller integrated, but I don't know if it's got a battery backup or not. That'll be interesting to see. So what I'm gonna do is I'll do a test where I just unplug it and see if it shuts down gracefully or not. I'm not sure what the total throughput of this thing is. That's better. One of the problems that we've seen with the USG is that the USG's throughput is not great, right? So I don't recommend the USG for internet connections more than about 300 megabits or so. It just, when you try to turn on intrusion detection, intrusion prevention, the DPI stuff, it just takes way too much of the, of the USG's processing power to also handle, you know, 300 megabit or more uh, bandwidth connections, internet connections. This device, on the other hand, has an ARM Cortex-A57 1.7 gigahertz quad-core CPU. So it's got a pretty beefy CPU. I'd be interested to know if you could get a full gigabit internet connection running through this thing with intrusion detection, intrusion prevention, and DPI turned on. I don't know the answer to that question. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to find out the answer to that question. Uh, my internet connection here is only like 400 by 20, so I don't really have the capacity to even test it properly. All right, so let's get this thing plugged in. Oh, nice long power cable, that's nice. I suppose I should probably hook this up to the network first. All right, so I'm plugging this into the ETH2 port from my Edge Router 4, and let's go ahead and power it on. Oh, we hear the fan kick in. And we see the white light, the ubiquity white light. Interesting question on the UDM US. Who is this device for? Right, so that's the first thing that people are gonna ask. What is this, who, who's the target market for this thing? Because while it integrates, oh, my dog's scratching at the door. Come on, turkey. While this integrates access point, switch, cloud key, and USG or firewall in one little unit, there's 
pluses and minuses to that, right? So first of all, cost is great. Like if you take a look at these components separately, if you've got a Nano HD, this is the sort of smallest 4x4 multi-user MIMO access point that Ubiquity makes. You got your USG, you got your cloud key, right? This doesn't even count the four port switch, but this is essentially combined, squished together into this device over here. Uh, the Nano HD is 172 bucks, the Cloud Key is 179, and the USG is usually around 139 bucks. So total of just under $500 for all three of these purchase, purchase separately, okay? Whereas this essentially encompasses all of these, and even better because supposedly it has better throughput than the USG uh, for 299. The downside is if I have my internet connection terminated down here in my basement well this device has the the access point built in if you're purchasing separately I can take this access point and I can go move it wherever I want it right so that's a pretty big advantage now you can purchase extra access points and then you know connect them adopt them to the UDM's Unify controller no problem uh, but there is something to be said for having these components separated. So where would I put this as far as a target market? I think this is going to be great for home users. All right, so home users that maybe aren't big fans of Amplify, they want to kind of be in the Unify side of the house. Uh, this is a great sort of entry point into Unify, especially if you're just trying to learn the interface and learn how it works. Also for small businesses with really vanilla needs, right? So I have a number of customers that could benefit from something like this that I have sold basically this exact setup to, right? Maybe a UAP Pro instead of the Nano HD. Uh, but so for all those types of customers, they don't have any sort of real crazy needs, they could absolutely use one of these. There are some downsides to this though. And you're gonna hear a lot of IT oriented people out there in the forums and in comments on YouTube and Twitter, wherever, they're gonna be bashing this thing and saying that, oh, you know, you can't adopt it to a hosted Unify controller. That's true. This doesn't do multi-site Unify. You're stuck to the one site that it comes with. I believe that's true. I, I, these are just things that I've heard online. Uh, you can't do any JSON file editing with this thing. Okay, no, you can't. But again, who's the audience for this thing? Like, don't listen to those, you know, snobby IT guys like myself if you're an enthusiast and you just want a really cool unified device for your home to play around with, this thing's gonna be great, right? Uh, or for your small business. So I would sort of put it in that area in like the Soho rather than the SMB market because uh, it's not something that I would deploy to a medium business. Uh, it is something that I would deploy to, you know, a tanning salon. They would love this thing. Just got everything all in one unit. You just plug it in and you're good to go. So I have my solid white ring. We are ready to get this thing set up. Let's try to do it through the Unify software. Uh, let me set my recording on. All right, add controller. One controller found, it says. Here we go. Oh, and now it is blinking blue, as you can see. So one controller found. Uh, we're going to say set up this controller. Okay, so Dream Machine. We're going to change the name. We're gonna call this R2 Dream2. We're gonna sign in with our UI.com account. Uh, here we have the opt-in, so auto-optimize, that's great, and then send diagnostics and performance information to Ubiquity. Uh, this is new since they got their hand uh, <laughs> caught in the cookie jar, uh, where now they ask you if you want to opt into their data collection. I'm gonna not opt-in for, for this one. Uh, so let's call our Wi-Fi network. We're going to call Dream Police, and we'll do a password of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's look at our advanced options. Uh, separate 2.4 and 5 gigahertz networks. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, I'm not going to do that in this case. We're just going to say next. Update schedule every day at 3 a.m. Okay, that's fine. Internet speed test is starting. All right, there we go. There's my approximate uh, 400 by 458 by 26. I should be about 400 by 20, so that's actually great. And then it says, adjust your speeds to what your internet provider has promised you. This will be used to determine problems with your internet. 
your internet service provider plan provides this information. I'm just gonna take the defaults that it found, that's perfectly fine, we're gonna say next. Review configuration, good, we're gonna click finish. And now it says setting up your network and it's estimating about four minutes and 45 seconds to set up the network. So we are going to pause here and we will come back when the network is set up. All right, so uh, it now says connect to your Wi-Fi, connect to your Wi-Fi network, Dream Police. Let's go, set, let's go ahead and say join Wi-Fi Dream Police. There we go, Wi-Fi connected. You are now connected to, wifi, to Dream Police. Setup is complete, access your network from anywhere. Unify OS, Unify Site Manager. So we have uh, a couple of different URLs here, https colon slash slash unify slash home and unify.ui.com. Let's say go to dashboard, R2 Dream 2. I like that name, we're gonna trust it. And there we go. So this looks like the standard Unify dashboard. Let's check out devices. So here's the Dream Machine. If we click on Dream Machine, we can see channel utilization. We can see our ports. Uh, by default, looks like it gave us 192.168.1.1 as the LAN network. And uh, one client connected to the 5G network. We can say configure, LED settings. We can turn the LED on and off. Off, save, oh, there we go, configure. LED use site settings on, there we go, back on. And yeah, this gives us all the sort of same Unify stuff that we've seen uh, previously. So let me do this. I'm gonna hook up a computer to this and then uh, we'll switch over to my desktop and I will try to log into the interface uh, just to look at the sort of backend sort of cloud key portion of the UDM. Okay, so I have opened up HTTPS colon slash slash unify slash home and it brought me to this page here. So here I have unify network and then your dream machine settings. So let's go here first. This is sort of the back end, the cloud key uh, controller uh, in the back end of the dream machine. We're going to say manage dream machine. And it wants me to log in with my UI login. Let's go ahead and bring that up. And here we have two FA tokens. So let's fire up the two-factor authentication. Google Authenticator 170496. There we go. So that is nice. So if you have 2FA enabled on your UI account or UI.com single sign-in, Ubiquity single sign-in account, um, this machine, the Dream Machine, will work with your two-factor authentication. So that's pretty sweet. I like that a lot. I don't believe that that is a, I don't believe that's something that you can even do in standard Unify with the cloud keys or with a hosted Unify controller yet. Correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments, but I don't think you can do 2FA yet with uh, regular Unify. Okay, so here's the dream machine. We have our overview, the name, firmware, IP address. Here's the CPU, memory, RAM. Let's look at our performance. Everything looks solid. Let's look at controllers. Here we can go into our unified network. It is 5.12.22 by default as of the recording of this video, uh, which is uh, November 26, 2019. And under settings, we've got general. Here's the device name, R2 Dream 2, time zone. We could factory reset or reboot the device. And then we can check for firmware updates or update manually if we want to say, you know, downgrade or go to a, you know, beta version of firmware or something like that. You can also disable the automatic updates, so that's pretty nice. But honestly, for home users, I would probably just leave automatic updates enabled and just have it check, you know, weekly or daily. Uh, it's not going to do anything different to the device. The downside is that there might be a piece of firmware pushed out to this device that's buggy and might cause it to crash or something like that. Uh, but the upside is that if there's a security issue where you know perhaps this device has a bug that needs to be fixed or a security flaw that needs to be fixed that update would come through automatically and you don't have to think about it so for home users i think that benefit outweighs the possible danger of you know uh, a, a firmware coming out that like bricks the device or something okay so let's go back to controllers and let's go ahead and launch unify network Okay, so it pulled up uh, 182.168.1.1 colon 8443.
let's go ahead and log in again and 2FA one more time all right, here we go. This is interesting. Look at this. Client Crosstalk i7, that's my computer here connected over wireless, is having trouble resolving a domain name to an IP address. If I can click on that. It doesn't give me any other information about it. Uh, I can resolve IPs fine. Let's double check. Yeah, I can resolve DNS just fine. All right, so let's take a look at some of our settings here. We're going to go to settings. Close this out. We have the try new settings up here in the corner. This is the sort of beta version that they're working on. Uh, I don't like it as much as the other version, but I'm also not used to it yet. So I'm just gonna keep back in classic mode for the time being. Now, one thing I noticed is that DPI was enabled by default on the UDM. So that's pretty cool. They wanna make sure that you're using the DPI and it looks like they probably are confident enough in the CPU of the device to have DPI turned on by default, which is not something I would recommend with like the standard USG. I'm just feeling for heat. It's not really warming up that much. It's a little warm around this LED ring, but that's about it. This thing's not warm at all, or not too hot at all, I should say. So let's look at the controller. Again, this is all just standard Unify from here on out, and I've done a thousand videos on Unify, so I'm not gonna dig too deep into that. Uh, obviously, if you come down here to backup, you wanna make sure that you do have auto backup turned on. That is always a good idea. And there's not a, interesting, there's not a little micro SD card that you could auto backup to. So there's another downside of this device. Uh, if you do turn auto backup on, and the di device completely craps out, yeah, you might have lost your backup. So make sure you download your backups, especially anytime you make a, a significant number of changes or like upon initial configuration of thing, download a backup so that you have that for safekeeping. <laughs> Everything else in here looks pretty standard. Uh, if we come over to threat management, so the intrusion detection stuff is not enabled by default. Let's go ahead and enable threat management. And we can click on threat management here and now that has been enabled. Oh, enable Unify threat management. Weird, I clicked on enable and it brought me to the new menu. <laughs> and then I have to come down here to threat management and turn it on. Okay, so threat management is now turned on. Uh, we have intrusion detection. Let's actually flip it over to intrusion prevention. Automatically block threats and malicious activity on your network. So again, if you are a small business or a home user, it's a really good idea to turn this on. Just throw on your IPS. It does have a note here though that says, enabling threat management will affect the Unify Dream Machine maximum throughput to 850 megabits per second. Or I'm wondering, I wonder if that means it will affect the maximum throughput, which is 850 megabits per second? Or does that mean its maximum throughput is theoretically one gigabit, but turning this on is gonna lock it down to 850 megabits per second? That's interesting. I don't know if that's uh, what the case is there. All right, let's save those changes. All right, so yeah, everything looks good. Again, I'm really happy with this device. I think it has its place in the sort of Unify family, and its place is gonna be the lower end. You know, people that wanna get into Unify, this is a nice all-in-one device. I think Unify did a really nice job on the UDM. Again, I wouldn't recommend it for IT snobs like myself because I want to have you know control over where I'm placing my access points and I just want to be able to fiddle with everything. But if you are not in IT, you know, if you or if you just want to not have to deal with everything, you want a nice all-in-one unit that just handles you know your whole apartment or your whole house or your whole small business. This is cool. Like this is really cool. And for 299 bucks for a four user, uh, multi-user MIMO on the access point, that's awesome. I think that's great. And then of course you can always adopt other access points to it. Now, I said that I was gonna try to see if it has a battery and just unplug it uh, and see if it actually just goes straight off. My guess here is that it's gonna go straight off. And I don't think there's an onboard battery that's gonna like sort of keep it alive for any length of time. Uh, we should see there. All right, ready? We're going to pull it. One, two, three. Pull. Yeah, look at that. It went straight off. So hopefully the lack of an onboard battery doesn't have the same cloud key gen one database corruption problems uh, that we used to see. I guess the jury is still out on that. 
Um, now, what kind of questions do you guys have about this device? I'm happy to do a follow-up video. If you have questions about it or comments about it, tell me what this device can't do that you wish it could do. Put that down in the comments below. If you have questions about this device, put those down in the comments below. And in my follow-up video, or maybe in a live stream or something, I will answer all of those questions and talk about those comments. In fact, let's go ahead and fire this thing back up for the time being. All right, there you go. Quick look at the Unify UDM Dream Machine trash can. Not a trash can. R2 Dream 2 That's what we're going to call it. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please click subscribe. My name is Chris with Crosstalk Solutions, and thank you guys so much for watching.